Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Bhargavi Dade and I'm going to explain about Animal Kingdom in this video. I'm going to explain what is important according to me perspective. So it's going to be like a crash course, like what is really important for the exam. Please like, share, comment and subscribe my videos and comment below regarding your interested topic. Now let's get started. So what is the real basis of classification? So there can be many features like how the cells are arranged, body symmetry and nature of body cavity. But basically they are divided into two types that is non-chordates and chordates. Okay, this is the main thing which is important to remember. They are divided into non-chordates and chordates. Now, before I move into the next page, um, I'm following NCRT and I would like you guys to follow the textbook and write down the points which I'm going to tell are important according to me perspective and which what are the questions that have been asked in previous papers. Now, coming to levels of organization. So there are cellular level of organization. There is organ level of organize, uh, organ level of organization, and in between organ and cell, there is tissue level of organization, and also organ system. Okay, so what is a cellular level of organization? One cell doing everything is called a cellular organization. So one cell is doing everything. Group of cells together form something called tissue. So here there is division of labor. Okay, so, um, and in organs, organs do the work and in organ system, like us, we are mammals, in organ system, there is excretory system for excretion, nervous system, endocrine system, circulatory system, respiratory system to do a particular function. Okay, so now talking about each in detail, what you need to remember in cellular level of organization is one cell is doing everything, Example is sponges, okay, porphyra. Now, tissue level of organization. So here you need to remember tenophora. So basically these are the phylum of invertebrate animals will be coming in detail slowly now for now you need to remember that group of cells together form tissue and they divide their functions now organ level is flatworms its name is platyhelminthes okay you can remember for now as flatworms where organ is doing the work and organ system it's mammals okay so now coming to what are the types of body like body plan so basically there are two types of body plans one is blind sac okay so what is meant by blind sac exactly is so imagine this is the opening through which food enters if through the same opening food goes out, that is waste product goes out, it is called as blind, blind sac body plan. So in platyhelminthes, that is flatworms, which have organ level of division, they have this type of body plan where ingestion and ejection, ejection is throwing out the solid waste. Both are happening through one opening. It is called as blind sac body plan. And now coming to humans. So we, like if you have watched my previous video on digestive system, I'll link it below. I have explained that we take the food through mouth, enters elementary canal and goes out through anus, okay, after getting digested. So there is one opening for ingestion and another opening for ejection, anus and mouth. So there are two things working here. This type is called as tube within tube and this process is called as digestion where food is getting digested, right? This is complete digestive system and blind sac is incomplete digestive system. Now, 
please note down this open type and closed type. Okay, so there are two types of circulatory system, closed type and open type. How to remember one uh, part about this, I would tell is C is closed, right? C for closed. Remember that C for closed also has capillaries. So open type means does not have capillaries. So what is really meant by closed type of circulation and open type of circulation? So closed type of circulation means the blood is in contact with the tissue through capillaries. Okay. Whereas in open type, the blood is directly in contact with the tissue. Okay. So in the closed type C for capillaries, there is something called capillaries for the blood to be in contact with tissue. Whereas in open types, there are no capillaries. Okay, so where do you see open type is? You see the open type in phylum Arthropoda, scorpion, spider, cockroach, prawn. prawn. Okay, so just for now, remember orthopods and cockroach. Okay. Now, coming to, um, I would like to ask you guys a question. So, do you think all chordates, like we are chordates, right? Do all chordates have closed circulatory system? This has been asked in NEAT. So, do you think all chordates, like we have, so let me explain one more thing. We have capillaries, right? So blood is passing, coming to tissues through capillaries. So mammals are chordates. But do you think all the chordates have closed circulatory system? No, there is an exception that is U chordates. Okay. U chordates. So you chordates have open type of circulation, okay? So all the chordates have closed type of circulation except eurochordates. So now, so chordates have notochord, nerve cord, pharyngeal slits, endostyles, and post anal tape, okay? Now coming to symmetry. So what is exactly meant by symmetry? So animals can be categorized on based of the symmetry. So basically how you're dividing the body into equal parts, two equal halves is called as symmetry. So now let me, um, so you guys know amoeba, right? Okay. And now draw a cylinder or a circle and think this is human. Okay. I know this doesn't look like, but you can imagine. So now, if I'm trying to divide amoeba through any side, it is not getting divided equally, right? But if I'm trying to divide through the central axis, through anywhere through central axis, it's exactly getting divided into two halves here in the circle. Whereas in humans, it can be only divided through one plane that is midline, right? So let me repeat it again. In amoeba, I'm trying to divide it several times. It's not getting divided into equal halves. Whereas in circle, it is getting divided through the central axis only. And only through one plane in humans, we are able to do that. So this type of symmetry, which you see in amoeba is asymmetrical. An example is sponges. Okay. And radial symmetry is um, echinoderms sealant rates, and humans come under bilateral symmetry, okay? And arthropods, annelids also come into bilateral symmetry. Now coming into diploblastic and triploblastic. So basically, animals in which cells are arranged in two embryonic layers, they are called as diploblastic. That is, there is outer ectoderm, inner endoderm, okay? But if there is mid layer mesoderm, it is called as triploblastic. Diplo means two, triplo means three. Okay. Now, 
um, you can remember the word CCD, that is Silenteta and Tinophora. Silenteta and Tinophora are diploblastic, okay? It's just a mnemonic. Again, Silenteta and Tinophora. This has also been asked in NEAT, so just remember this. Now, so what is coelom? So basically it is the presence or absence of a cavity between body wall and the gut is very important. This body cavity is lined by mesoderm, is called as coelom. So what is the real uh, um, function of coelom? It acts as shock absorber. Okay. Also, it is also called as body cavity. Okay. So the animals which have coelom are called coelomates, which have false pseudo means false. False coelom are called pseudo coelomates, and which do not have any coelom are called as acelomates. Now, these are coelomates. So if you can see, the body cavity is lined by mesoderm. Okay. Here, endoderm is there. You can't see any mesoderm. Here, there is false body cavity where it's lined by mesoderm. Okay. So, yeah. Now, example of acelomates is flat forms and pseudocelomates is uh, acelomates and um, Example of coelomates are arthropods, annelids, and echinoderms. Now coming into segmentation. So what is segmentation, basically? So if you try to, uh, if you have seen any earthworm, uh, what is exactly meant by segmentation and what is segment or metamerism is, if you see the earthworm, the body shows a pattern that it has same segments. Like if you see 100 segments on its outer surface, if you try to cut it and open, even inside you'll see 100 segments. Okay, that is called a segmentation. The, each part is called segment or metamer. Okay, we observe such thing in humans too. How many thoracic vertebrae are there, do you think? Like you see something like, rings and everything, right? How many thoracic vertebrae are there? There are 12 of them. Now, what is meant by notochord? Notochord is derived from, it is a mesodermally derived rod-like structure formed on the dorsal side, okay? So animals which have notochord are called chordates and which do not have, are called as non-chordates. Okay, so basically, let me write it down here. In notochords, there is no notochord and there is notochord. Okay, but if there is no notochord, it is called as non chordates. If there is notochord, it is called chordates. But chordates is also divided into two. One is the chordates, just remember, like the notochord doesn't change at all. But if the notochord changes to vertebrae, then that is vertebrae. So they are divided into, notochord is divided into no, no notochord, that is non-chordates, and chordates are divided into notochord which doesn't change, and another one which changes into vertebrae. So invertebrae also include non-chordates as well as chordates which have notochord. Okay, I hope I'm clear. Now, so this is the classification of animal kingdom. At cellular level, you see porifera and at tissue, organ, organ system level, there is radial symmetry and there is bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry is the example which I gave as a human, can be divided into two halves only through one plane and through central axis plane, it is called radial symmetry. And um, here I have asked you to remember CCD as an example, that is diploblastic is tenofera and coelenterata. Okay, now 
uh, in bilateral without body cavities, acylomate, false coelom is called pseudocoelomate, true coelom is called coelomates, right? So acylomates is flatworms, platyhelminthes, ascalmanthes is pseudocoelomates, and true coelomes are annelids, arthropods, mollusca, echinodermata, hemichordata, and chordata. But one question that's asked in need, please write it down right here near hemichordata that it does not have notochord. So we have studied, right, all the chordates does not mean that they all are vertebrates. Chordates are divided into notochord and notochord, if it changes into vertebrate, it is called as vertebrates. Now, hemichordate does not have notochord. So hemichordate does not have a notochord. Okay. Then it has something called stomochord. What does it have? Stomochord. Which is ectodermal in origin. So hemichord data does not have notochord. It has stomochord, which is ectodermal in origin. And please write it down because this was asked in NEAT previous neat papers. Now coming to phylum porifera, sponges if you have remembered. So what happens here is sponges have a water transport or canal system. So water enters through these tiny pores, they are called as ostea. Okay, they're called ostea and they go into central cavity that is called spongocene. So this is important. I'm just putting dots. So whichever are like highlighted, mostly questions come from there. Most of them, maximum. So just if there is any extra point, just write it down there. Uh, so water is entering through minute pores, ostea, then going to cavity, central cavity, spongocene, and then they come out through osculum. So water goes out through osculum. So ostea are the pores where water is entering, goes into central cavity, and goes out through Osculum. Okay. This pathway is important for everything. So this is cellular level, right? So excretion, respiration, everything occurs only through one thing. Okay. Now there is something called um, the body is supported with a skeleton made up of spicules. There are spicules or spongin fibers. Here, sexes are not separate, they are hermaphrodites. So basically, what do I what do I mean by this word is X and sperms are produced by same individual. Okay, so X and sperms both are produced by same individual. Here, fertilization can occur inside or outside. It can occur internally or externally. So how does it happen? Like if you think this is one sponge, this is another sponge, how do they really mate? So there is a sperm in this sponge and ova is produced in this sponge. Then it's passed. Okay. So asexually it happens through fragmentation and asexually it's happening through fragmentation and sexually it's happening through gametes. Okay. Now. Now coming to phylum Coelenterata, Nidaria. So here, what you need to remember is they have something called nidoblasts. Okay, they have nidoblasts. So what are these nidoblasts used in? They are help in anchorage, offense, defense, capture, or prey. Okay, so they help in anchorage, offense, defense, and capture or prey. So now um, they have something called gastrovascular cavity. Okay, so what happens here? The name Nidaria is derived from nidoblast or nidocytes. So nidocytes, what are these nidocytes is? They paralyze their prey. Basically what do they do is they paralyze their prey with the help of tentacles. So they have tentacles, okay? With the help of that, they paralyze. They have only one opening. Okay. They have only one opening. This is medusa. This is polyp. They have only one opening. It is called hypostome. So digestion is extracellular and 
intracellular. Some of Nidarians, example corals, have a skeleton made up of calcium carbonate. So what happens is, what are these corals exactly is, when they die, they leave behind something made up of calcium, which is very beautiful. It is called as corals and their algae grows. Okay, so Nidarians exhibit two basic body forms. One is polyp, this is polyp, and one is medulla. Okay, so this is sessile, this is not active, it doesn't move, and this is umbrella shaped and it is freely moving. Okay, so example is hydra and freely moving is jellyfish. Okay, some some Nidarians exhibit both forms, polyp as well as medu uh, medusa. Okay, they can form both polyp and medusa. The example is obelia. Okay, now coming to phylum Tenophora. Okay, so you this looks like a ball with a lot of... So basically, if anyone have... Um, seen something like this, it looks like jellyfish with electric current inside it, okay? It's exclusively in seawater, not there in fresh water at all. This is the main thing you need to remember. And these are also called as sea walnuts or comb jellies, okay? And it has bioluminescence. So, this has a property to give out light. It emits light. So digestion is both extracellular as well as intracellular. Okay. And sexes are not separate here. So they are both male and female. There is no separation here. Reproduction takes place only by sexual means. And fertilization is external. Okay. Now you need to remember there is something like body plates here, right? This is very important. They have cilia. These are called as comb plates. Okay. So what you need to remember here, you need to remember that they are exclusively in seawater, not in freshwater. They're also called as sea walnuts or comb jellies. And they have comb plates and they emit light. That is bioluminescence is seen. Okay. Examples is tenoplana and chlorobrachia. You need to remember all the examples. All by yourself, there is no way you can escape that. Now, coming to phylum platyhelminthes, that is platform. It is something like 2D. Now, what do I mean by 2D? There are just two things. Like, if you see a sandwich, if you don't put anything in between two bread pieces, that's how a platform looks like. Okay, it has flat body. That's why it's called platform. And they're bilaterally symmetrical. Okay, so... Actually, there are two types present in their parasitic forms. One is hook and another one is sucker. So what happens in hook form and sucker form is in hook, it attaches to the host. Okay, in sucker, it attaches and sucks blood, lymph, everything from the host. Host is usually human sometimes. So again, let me repeat. Hooks and suckers are present in the parasitic forms. Hook means it only attaches. Whereas sucker means it attaches as well as sucks. So here sexes are not separate. And uh, fertilization is internal. Some members like planaria, that is they, they have a lot of regeneration capacity. So you need to remember about planaria. They possess high regeneration capacity. Okay. And there are some special characteristics about this is they have flame cells. So flame cells, you can write down here, flame cells are also called as solenocytes or protonephridia. By the name itself, nephridia. So you can guess it helps in osmoregulation and excretion. Okay. So what does these flame cells do? There are specialized cells which help in osmoregulation and excretion. Now, what are the important points in phylum platyhelminthesis? It's a 2D structure, dorsoventrally flattened body, 
That's why it's called flatworms. And then they are the parasites from uh, seen in, in human. Humans are the hosts here. There are hook and sucker types. Hook means they attach to the host. Sucker means they attach and suck blood and limb from human body. Now there are special cells called flame cells, which are very important. They are also called as solenocytes and protonephridia. Please write it down in your book right here itself. And they help in cell balance in the body. They help in osmoregulation as well as excretion. Now, coming to Ascalmanthus. Now, here, the body of Ascalmanthus is circular in cross-section. Now, what do I mean is, if you cut here, you can see the body in cross-section as round. That is circular. Hence, the name roundworm. Okay, so, so they are circular in cross-section, hence the name roundworm. They are free living, aquatic, terrestrial, parasitic. What you need to remember here is they are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic and false coelomate animals, pseudo coelomate animals. Okay, so plants, it is melodita and incognita, incognitia, and in animals, it is hookworm. Okay, they are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic, and pseudo -celomate. Please underline this, this, and this. Okay, now, elementary canal is complete in them. They have a muscular pharynx. So, why do they really have this muscular pharynx? The reason they have muscular pharynx is to suck the important substance from the host. That is to take the nutrition from the host. Okay, so males and females are distinct. Often female is long, like if you can see here, they're longer than males. Fertilization is internal and development may be direct. Example is Ascaris roundworm. And um, please write it down here. Ascaris is monogenetic. Okay, so what do I mean by monogenetic is its life cycle is only one time in one host, okay? And Bukharia is digenetic, okay? So it means it has two life cycles in the host. Now, phylum Annelida. Annelida is basically aquatic, marine, and freshwater or terrestrial. So here, the main thing you need to remember is about the segments. They are distinctly divided into metamers or segments and they have parapodia. So what is meant by podia? Podia is fit, para means false. So they have false foot. And why do they need that? They need that to swim and they also need it for respiration. Okay. So... Why do they need that? They need it in swimming and respiration. This has been asked in NEAT. And a closed circulatory system is present here. Nephridia, that is, of course, they help in excretion, is also present. And these are the important things that you need to remember according to the NEAT perspective. That is, their body is divided into segments, metamers, and they have false food, and they have nephridia, which helps in excretion, osmoregulation, and uh, this nerus in an aquatic form, it is dioecious, but earthworm and leeches are monaceous. Okay, so let me tell you something about leech. Now, leech has something called herodin, okay, that helps in sucking of blood, okay. So, Neris, N E R E I S, it is dioecious, and earthworm and leeches are monaceous. Okay, and one more thing about leech you need to remember is it has herodin, which helps in sucking of the blood. Now, coming to phylum Arthropoda. So, Arthropoda is basically divided into head, thorax, and abdomen. Okay, what are they divided into? Head, thorax, and abdomen. Okay, so basically if these arthropods are in water, 
they respire through gills and scorpion or spider through book lungs and if it's insects they have tracheal system okay how do they respire if arthropods are in water they respire through gills if it's scorpion or spider book lungs if insects then tracheal system one thing to remember it is the largest phylum okay now if you take a cockroach okay if you have dissected it or if you have observed closely or if you can do that right now it would be great there is one outer layer okay okay that is the exoskeleton it is covered by chitinous exoskeleton that's a very important point you need to say that the outer layer is called chitinous exoskeleton the body consists of head thorax and abdomen they have jointed appendages that is arthros means joint poda means foot okay and respiratory organs are gills like i told you if they are in water they respire through gills if book lungs in case of scorpion and spider and if it's insect they have tracheal system now coming to how does the excretion takes place in them excretion takes place in them to something called malpighian tubules okay you can see malpighian tubules between the hind gut and the mid gut okay so the fertilization is usually internal and they are oviparous oviparous means they give eggs okay examples is apis honey bee they give honey bombyx silkworm they give silk lacifer lac insect lac is used in making of the bangles and now vectors vectors is anopheles this leads to malaria culex uh i think it leads to filariasis aedes and dengue and chikungunya and there are gregarious pests that is they come in pack and cause harm that is locusta and living fossil is king crab okay so what do you need to remember in arthropod let me repeat it again if arthropods are living in water they respire through gills and scorpion and spider through book lungs and if it's insect it's tracheal system now arthropod is divided into head thorax and abdomen if you see a cockroach you can see the outer layer that has chitinous exoskeleton and they have jointed appendages and excretion is taking place through malpighian tubules which is there in between hind gut and mid gut and their oviparous that is they lay eggs some are economically important insects that is they give honey silk and help in making of bangles but some vectors are very harmful they lead to malaria filariasis dengue and gregarious pests are the ones which come in a pack and then affect cause harm okay phylum mollusca phylum mollusca you can easily remember that it has one head okay it has one muscular foot and it has a visceral hump hump is the one where it has organs and it has head and tentacles here and this is the muscular foot they have feather like gills okay so the body is covered by shell and they have distinct head muscular foot and a visceral hump and uh, they have both these gills which are present here they do both the respiratory as well as excretory function now the anterior head region has sensory tentacles the mouth contains a file like rasping organ for feeding it is called radula it is asked in 2000 neat please note it down the mouth contains a file like rasping organ for feeding so what it what is this radula is instead of teeth like you know how we eat something with teeth they hold the prey with the help of an organ called as radula like how we have teeth okay so let me repeat it again in phylum mollusca they have head they have muscular foot and they have visceral hump and there is a sponge and soft layer on the hump and um, let me tell you something between the hump and the mantle there is a uh, feather like gills are present this cavity is called mantle cavity okay they have gills in between them so they have head they have visceral hump they have muscular foot and these gills are both respiratory and excretory in function and they have something like tooth that is called as radula 
okay to hold the prey now let me ask you something which molluscan has closed circulatory system anyone which has closed circulatory system answer is octopus okay so you need to remember all the examples and please remember everything sepia cuttlefish has been asked in neat so it is a five star important thing now coming to phylum echinodermata okay this is exclusively marine this is exclusively marine okay now so here they have spiny body okay spiny body this is what you can see they have spiny body they have only one system okay they are spiny they have only one system and that is water vascular system which is used for locomotion water vascular system okay and how is the locomotion done is through tube feet okay so they have very distinctive feature of this echinoderm is water vascular system okay that helps in locomotion capturing transporting the food and respiration fertilization is usually external sexes are separate here let me tell you something excretory system is completely absent here okay now please remember the examples so let me go over again about phylum echinodermata it is exclusively marine it has spiny body it has only one system that is water vascular system and locomotion is done through tube feet there is no excretory system separate okay sexes are separate here and reproduction is sexual fertilization is external and development happens through free swimming larva now what is phylum hemichordata phylum hemichordata is usually they are neither non chord not chordata or they are chordates like you know they are half and half they are they don't have chord like they cannot be classified as non chordates or chordates okay so that's the reason they have separate phylum now they have stomochord please write it down they have stomochord okay which is ectodermal in origin what is it ectodermal in origin okay and they are worm like marine animals and what you need to remember here is the body cylindrical it is composed of anterior proboscis collar and a long trunk circulatory system is open type circulatory system what is the type of circulatory system open type of circulatory system respiration is happening through gills and excretory organ is called as proboscis gland the important thing to remember here excretory organ is called as proboscis gland okay sexes are separate fertilization is external and development is indirect sacoglossus and balanoglossus are the examples here you need to remember the main thing is they are neither nor chord nor chordates or chordates they have stomochord which comes from ectoderm and they have proboscis collar and a long trunk they have gills for respiration excretory organ is proboscis is the excretory organ circulatory system is open type now coming to phylum chordata i want you to remember four important things of course notochord will be there that's why it is called chordata nerve cord will be there gill slits will be there and they have anal part also okay now so they have nerve cord notochord gills and anal part now why is phylum chordata divided into two types that is urochordata and vertebrata okay urochordata uh, or cunicata so why are urochordates called cunicates so basically what happens is the soft body will be present inside a case okay they are called cunicata and this case is made up of cellulose like material 
okay and cephalocordata cephalo means head they have notochord throughout the life okay and vertebrata so why is it called urochordata or tunicata is the soft body is present inside a case and this case is made up of cellulose like material okay now this is what you need to remember here and in us the notochord is replaced by vertebral column in adult okay now coming to this division vertebrata it is divided into agnatha agnatha means absent okay gnato stomata gnato means bearing agnatha means absent okay and gnato means bearing okay and agnatha is divided into cyclostomata and what is cyclostomata circular mouth okay so circular mouth can be seen here and gnathostomata that is which has jaw is divided into pieces and tetrapoda pieces means it has fins so chondro means cartilage or sti means bone okay they are further divided into chondrites and so chondro means cartilage okay pieces and tetrapoda tetra means four pod means foot okay now coming to class cyclostom stomata so basically they migrate from sea water to marine water okay and you need to remember that they have 6 to 15 gill slits for respiration and they are ectoparasites on some fish that is they suck the food from the host and why do they have circular mouth for parasitic action okay please remember the examples of this now coming to class chondrich fish now they are marine animals they have cartilaginous exoskeleton notochord is present throughout the life now gill slits are separate without a gill cover okay they do not have any cover on their skin okay they do not have a gill cover that is they do not have operculum their skin has see you can see something like teeth like structure but they are not actually teeth they are called as placoid scales what are they called placoid scales okay and these are basically minute teeth like structures and their jaws are very powerful they like that is how they get their prey and they do not have air bladder so in order to live they need to constantly keep swimming because they don't have air bladder they can't just stop swimming the moment they stop swimming they're going to die so what you need to remember in this class is notochord is present throughout the life and they do not have the gill cover that is operculum they have something like teeth like structures they are called as placoid scales and they do not have air bladder so they need to keep on swimming okay and the heart is two chambered okay and they have electric organs okay like to torpedo and they have a poisonous sting they have a poisonous sting and they are cold blooded and why are they cold blooded exactly is because they lack they do not their body does not have the capacity to regulate body temperature like us we have the capacity to regulate our body temperature but they do not have sexes are separate now let me repeat what are important here that is notochord is present throughout the life they do not have operculum they have placoid scales like teeth like structures they do not have air bladder so to avoid sinking they need to constantly keep swimming and they have electric organs a poisonous sting and they are cold blooded animals okay now everything opposite to this is this class so they are they have operculum they are cycloid they have air bladder and they have cartilage now coming to amphibians so what is important in amphibians is they have head and they have trunk okay now they have eyelids they don't have eyebrows but they have eyelids okay the amphibian skin is usually moist and they have a ear that is called tympanum and 
they have elementary canal, urinary and reproductive tracts open into a common chamber. So what is cloaca is if there is more than one system, like there is three systems here almost, right? Elementary canal, urinary and reproductive. So if more than three systems are going into one common chamber, it is called as cloaca. Okay, which opens into exterior. So the respiration here is through gills, lungs and through skin. Their heart is three chambered. Their heart is three chambered and they're cold blooded animals. Their sexes are separate. Fertilization is external. They're oviparous. Please remember limbless amphibia name that is ichthyophyus, which is very important. Okay, so what do you need to remember here? They have head, they have trunk, and they have tympanum, which represents the ear, and they have elementary canal, urinary, and reproductive tract that opens into cloaca. And what is cloaca? If more than one system opens into a common chamber, it is called as cloaca, and the heart is three-chambered here. Okay, now what are reptiles, reptilia? The class reptilia represents creeping and crawling animals, okay? What do they represent? Creeping and crawling animals. Fertilization is internal and they have dry scales, okay? And if you have noticed, they, you might have seen something like dry skin left over from a snake. Have anyone seen that? Please let me know in the comments below. So that is nothing but skin casting. So in order to grow, they leave their skin behind, their old skin behind and grow new ones. Okay. So reptilia is creeping and crawling animals. Dry scales are there or they are also called as scoots. They are called dry scales or scoots and they are creeping animals. They are creepy also and fertilization is internal and skin cast is present. Okay. Now, Apis comes from reptiles itself. So there are, let me tell you, they have feathers, okay? There is something different between feathers and wings. Please don't get confused. Feathers help to regulate the body temperature, whereas wings help to fly, okay? What are feathers doing? They help to regulate the body temperature, whereas wings help to fly. Okay, now the skin is dry and they have oil glands at their tails. So at their tails, they have oil glands. Okay, now an important thing to remember here is they have crop and they have gizzard. What do they have? They have crop and gizzard. I'm talking about aves, okay? I don't have space here, so I'm writing it down here. So crop is used to store the food, whereas gizzard is used to grind. G for gizzard, G for grinding or breaking of the food. So now what do you need to remember in this class? They come from reptiles, they have feathers. Feathers help to regulate body temperature and wings help to fly. Their skin is dry, they have oil glands at their tail and crop is there to store the food and gizzard is there to break the food, okay? And they're warm-blooded animals and respiration is done by lungs and they have air sacs, they have air sacs which are connected to the lungs, okay? And what, what is the purpose of these air sacs is it reduces the body weight, okay? They're avascular, they help in cooling of body and they regulate body weight. So let me again go like give a review. So they come from reptiles, they have feathers, like you can see they have feathers and wings are meant to fly. Feathers are for regulating body temperature, their skin is dry, they have oil glands at their tails. Crop is used to store the food and gizzard is used to break the food, that is to grind the food, okay? They're warm-blooded animals and the respiration is done through lungs. Air sacs are connected to the lungs. They are avascular, cooling of the body happens because of that and body weight is reduced because of the air sacs, okay? So pigeon, parrot, crow, ostrich, everything comes under this. Mammalia, so we are mammals. 
Mammals are the ones, we are called mammals because we have mammary glands, okay? And let me tell you something. Is diaphragm present in all the mammals? Absolutely yes. There is no exception, okay? All mammals have diaphragm. We all are viviparous, okay? Except there is one exception. Please let me know in the comments below what is the exception for that. Thanks for watching this video and let me give an overview about mammalia because I think I did not give it. So diaphragm is present and we are called mammals because we have mammary glands, we have hair and uh, all over the body and we have ears, external ears are present, heart is four chambered and we are homeothermous, respiration is done through lungs, we have different organ systems and that's it that's about mammalia so i have covered exactly what are really important according to neat perspective i will be sharing some neat questions related to this topic in my next video please keep watching and please like share and subscribe and comment below if you have any questions or if you want me to make any particular topic you're interested but i'm going to make it like a short crash course because there's just September 13th is the exam, so I'm not going to go into detail. I'm only going to go according to the important points based on last 10 years' questions. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel.